Uh, today, I want you to uh, take your Bibles, and I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of, of um, Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew 7, 7. Would you say that, please? Matthew 7, 7. I want to begin reading because this is one of the great scra uh, uh, chapters in the Bible, and Jesus spoke these words. This is written in red, Ask, and, you shall uh, and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what manner of man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, say that with me, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Father, anoint your word with great power in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Here Jesus defined what prayer is. Prayer is to ask. It's not just singing and worshiping and praising the Lord. All of that's wonderful. And that ushers you into the presence of God. Is it, it isn't just taking the Word of God and reading it, and uh, you should read the Word of God. Praying cannot take the place of reading the Word of God, but reading the Word of God cannot take the place of prayer. It is not meditation or just thinking about what God said, but prayer is to ask. He says, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. You take the A from ask, the S from seek, and the K from knock, and it still spells ask. You have not because you ask not. I remember I was in seminary, and I had a professor by the name of Dr. Thomas Carruth. He was a great Methodist man of God. Uh, we were in class one day, and uh, he was known as the man of prayer. He had written a book, 40 Days of Prayer, and uh, just a very powerful uh, man. And uh, he said, I've been praying for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He said, I haven't got much of a prayer language, but I did get a word, and I think I'll just pray that word. Abba, Abba, Abba. And he started just saying Abba. And then he just burst into his prayer language right in a class there at Asbury Seminary. But he uh, once told the story about how a man uh, came and he was preaching. He was preaching about prayer. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, in everything through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And a man said to him, Dr. Carruth said, um, you know, I believe God answers prayer but not about, you know, everything. I don't pray about everything. I mean, you could, you, using that thought, you could pray and get a barrel of pickles. I'll never forget, a barrel of pickles. And Dr. Carruth says, well, that's right. If you want a barrel of pickles, then you need to pray for it. Because the Bible says in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now you think about that just for a moment. Uh, what do we pray about? We pray about everything. The Word of God says in John 15, verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, then ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. The Bible declares in the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. In Matthew 21, 22, it says, all things, all things. Say that with me. All things, whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 13 and 14, it says, And whatsoever we ask of him, we receive, because... Uh, uh, we, uh, whatsoever things we ask, we receive of him. And uh, if we ask anything in his name, 
he will do it. If we ask anything in his name, he will do it. I remember one time watching on television, it was a baseball game. And Dizzy Dean was on there and he was talking about prayer. Dizzy Dean might be able to talk about baseball, but he certainly wasn't an expert on prayer. He said sometimes God says yes, and sometimes God says no. God always answers prayer. It's with a yes or with it's a no. We don't ever really know. Well, that's a bunch of garbage is what that is. God answers prayer according to his word. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And we are to pray about every single thing we want. It's not wrong to want something and if it's not wrong to pray for it. It's not wrong to pray for it if it's not wrong to want it and to desire it. Margaret and I had a car. It was a Pontiac. And we were on the interstate, and that car caught on fire. It burned up right there on the interstate. We had it towed in. We didn't have any money in those days, and... Uh, we were praying, and I said, I was praying real early one morning, and I said, Lord, I need a car. And uh, all of a sudden, something rose up within me, and I said, Lord, could I have a new car? I mean, like, God, I don't want to push you. I know things are tough uh, in heaven financially, but, but I, I, I said, God, could I have a new car? And the Lord spoke to me and said, yes. Well, it, it was a surprise to me, and I said, well, uh, What kind? And the Lord says, well, you'll know when you see it. And so I begin to go from dealership to dealership to dealership, and I know what kind of car God likes. (laughs) It's Chrysler. And uh, nobody else likes them, but God likes them. And uh, I remember uh, Margaret and I went over, and we saw there on the showroom floor this beautiful Chrysler. And uh, it had those uh, leather seats. And I just, I mean, I, the cars I had, they usually uh, had 100,000 plus miles on it before it ever reached my financial category. And I remember I saw this car, and I sat down in that seat, and the salesman came up, and he says, would you like to own this car? And I said, I sure would. And he said, well, let's go back here. And before you know it, I'd sign my life away. And when I got home, I thought to myself, I said, you know, there'll be, there's, there's no way we could buy that car. I don't know what got into me. I'm going to call them and tell them tomorrow I'm not going to pick that car up. And so that night I became so sick. I mean, I really, really got sick. And God had healed me of this uh, sickness that I, I had, but it came back on me. And I said, Lord, you healed me of this. And the Lord says, I healed you in faith when you prayed. But now when you're operating in doubt and unbelief, after I've given you this car, it's opened the door for that sickness and everything else to come back on you. And I told the Lord if he would heal me and uh, heal me again, that I'd go get that car. And that's what I did. The Lord healed me that night. The next day I went over and picked up my car. And I paid that car off a year early. I'm here to tell you that God will give you anything you got the faith to believe God for. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Now, we don't have to feel goosebumps when we pray. There's a lot of people, they pray and they feel good. And they think that means God heard their prayer. And if they pray and they don't feel anything, well, then God didn't hear the prayer. Well, the, uh, the, uh, Martin Luther wrote a song, and it says, feelings come and feelings go, and feelings are deceiving. But I've based my faith in the word of God. None else is worth believing. And so Jesus asked us to do one thing, and that is believe, not to feel anything. He doesn't ask us to have goosebumps He doesn't ask us to get emotional and weep and cry. All of that's wonderful. But all he asks us to do is believe and uh, we will receive. In the book of Mark chapter 9 verse 23 it says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible unto him that believeth. In uh, in, uh, Mark 11 
Verse 24, it says, Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Can I hear an amen? amen. In Mark 5, 36, it says, Be not afraid, only believe. In the book of Acts 16, 3, it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy household. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, but with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And so it's with our heart we believe. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, tonight, I believe God is, uh, is calling our church to a new dimension of prayer. We have gone now into this really declaring war on ISIS. And you hear how the, uh, we're beginning to bomb into Syria. And you think how Syria, this country of Syria, how it, it's like the United States, a large, vast area. It's not like the United States. It's, uh, it's like an area between, uh, like here in Bowling Green, is what you're talking about. It's, uh, I have been uh, in 40 miles into Syria, and I was uh, about a 40-minute a tank ride on in to Damascus. And you're talking about a small country here that Israel could bomb Damascus in a, a jet in about two and a half minutes. That's about how far it is from a rocket and from a, 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 a missile going into that part of, of the country. And not only have we declared that, but we are now, uh, there are all type of ISIS agents that uh, are in this country. Uh, a number of weeks ago, I met at the FBI office, the director of the FBI, he was from Owensboro, and we got talking about it. And I said to him, I said, uh, uh, are you receiving any terrorist reports? He said, well, we've intercepted a lot of pictures of Chicago. And uh, there are very strategic sites and also in Las Vegas. And it looks like they're planning something in a lot of those casinos. And then downtown in Chicago, he said, uh, our guys are working on that. But uh, uh, we're in a, a very unique time in the history of our country. And I think everyone agrees with that. I was at the airport, and I was flying out just uh, last week, and a one-star general came up to me, and he bought me a cup of coffee. And uh, this uh, general, had, when he was a captain at Fort Knox, he attended our church. He attended it for about a year, and then he got transferred. And uh, we could begin talking about this, and he told me that he had gotten a phone call, and he said that they told me that I've got about 30 days before I have to move and get my family situated. And I said, well, what, what aspect are you really involved in? He said, I'm involved in the infantry. But we're living in a time where there's a lot of things that could happen, and I feel like God wants us to do our part, and that is to pray. I'm not going out there and, and fight in the military. I pray for our boys who do. But God has called us to pray. And so our staff entered into a prayer chain. My time to pray is 3 o'clock in the morning. Margaret's time is 4 o'clock. I finish up, I wake her up, she goes and prays. The first night of our prayer, I overslept. And so I had to get up with Margaret and pray. She didn't oversleep. But I've asked our people to take a time to pray. And to pray that time at least five days a week. And this way, if it's in the wee hours of the morning, you can sleep in a day or so catch up on your sleep, and just pray another time. But if we can begin to have a prayer chain and then have a time of fasting, 
where everyone has a day of fasting. I believe that God will do things for us that will not happen for other people because they did not pray. I want us to pray for our, our country. I want us to pray for revival to come to our country. I want us to pray for our families, that God will pour out His Spirit mightily upon our families. I want us to pray for our finances. During the year of the Sheetma, which started uh, actually today, or, or uh, I guess it was Wednesday, started yesterday, it goes for one year. It's called the year of the release. And historically, if you honor God, you're blessed. And if you don't honor God, it's like a curse comes on you. And it usually comes in the way of finances. The worst hits America has had in the last 40 years have come in these seven-year cycles of the year of the Shemitah. It's come, and they and many uh, economists who don't know anything about the Bible, don't even own a Bible, they are saying that this year looks like a time of a great collapse. Well, I'm not participating in a uh, collapse because I'm on the blessing side in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want you to believe God for breakthroughs and for miracles to happen in your life. Now, I want to share with you how I want you to encourage, to encourage you to pray. There are different uh, types of prayers and different ways to pray. But if a person will learn how to pray, you'll always be able to contact God. You'll always be able to hear from the Lord simply if you learn one of the, the, the powers of prayer and how to pray. How can we know that the end times are truly here? And how long will it be before the return of Christ? Dr. Bob Rogers answers these questions and more in his CD teachings, Signs of the End Times. Discover the true pattern in the Bible of how we know the times we live in. This teaching will encourage you to spread your faith with others and to win the lost in the last great battle for souls. Signs of the End Times is available now from Bob Rogers Ministries by calling 1-888-613-6080 or visit bobrogersministries.org and request your copy today. For some, college will deliver a career. But for you, it's always been about a calling. Discover your path to successful ministry and fulfill your call at Evangel Christian College. We offer a wide range of classes for ministry-minded individuals just like you, with night and weekend classes available and financial aid for those who qualify. Evangel Christian College is your perfect opportunity to grow. You know your call. Now make the call that'll help you reach your goals. Evangel Christian College. Realize your call. shame and an indictment upon me and our staff if you come to this church and you don't learn how to pray. Are you listening to me? Pinch the person next to you and say, listen, he's talking about you. Now, Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer pattern. And throughout the Bible, there are many patterns of prayer. There's a tabernacle pattern of prayer. The tabernacle and how it was constructed is a pattern actually of prayer. There are different patterns that are revealed throughout the Bible. Uh, Jesus revealed in the Lord's Prayer pattern a pattern of, uh, that has seven different aspects of that prayer. But another way of prayer in the Bible, one of the oldest, is called the positional pattern of prayer. And the positional pattern of prayer is based upon praying in the Bible, praying the Word of God. And you take the first person of the Bible and you put yourself in that position in the Bible 
and you begin to pray as a first person. When the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that's written therein. For then I'll make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This book of the law, that's the Bible, shall not depart out of your mouth. You've got to speak it. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You've got to think it. That thou mayest observe to do all that's written therein. You've got to do it. And then, say then. Then's a preposition that means if you do what uh, is before, then this will follow. I'll make your way prosperous and thou will have good success. The first time success is ever used in the Bible is in connection with speaking, thanking, and doing the Word of God. Now this indicates, this indicates that the law of God is spoken, and it's spoken in a time of meditation, in a time of prayer. And this is where the whole um, rhythm of the positional prayer began to come forth from the rabbis. It came forth through this verse to begin to pray the Word of God. Margaret and I were going to Washington, D.C. We were in, in um, we, were, we were going, excuse me, to Israel, and we were in New York at Kennedy Airport, and we were flying El Al. That's a Jewish airline, and, and the Jew, there was a, a group of young people on that flight, and uh, we were waiting to board the plane, and one of the kids said, hey, it's a prayer time. Well, they had their, their, you know, their, their, their earphones and everything else that kids have. And they all got up, and they went over to a corner. There must have been 30 of them. And they got out their prayer books. Do you know what those prayer books are? Those prayer books are scriptures, and they're a declaration of who they are. Now, as a Pentecostal, Many times you look at those people and say, well, they don't have the freedom of the Holy Ghost to pray, and they don't have this like we do. But let me tell you, they pray it. They pray the Word of God. And as they begin to pray this prayer book, it's a declaration of who they are. A lot of our kids don't know who they are. We are people of God, called with a purpose. We are people that stand together in loyalty and unity with our families. We are people that nothing is impossible. And they begin to make declarations of healing and blessings and prosperity. And every time they come to a name of God, they bow. That's why you see the people pray and they'll, they'll bow and then they'll bow. That's when it comes to the name of, of Jehovah. And so in reverence, they bow to that. Well, let me just say this. God's honored the Jewish people. And God's blessed them. And God's prospered them. And it's because of their prayer. Well, it really spoke to me about writing a declaration and a prayer. And so I'd never done that before. But I want to encourage you to write prayers. If you're going through a difficult time, write, write down a prayer and declare it and proclaim it and speak it over your family. Speak it over your finances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had a dear sister come Sunday, and she told me they had diagnosed her with cancer. And um, I told her, I said, what I want you to do is take that prayer that we did on cancer, and I want you to take it and give it out to about 50 of your friends and ask them for the next 30 days to declare this prayer over, over, your, over you. Well, that's the only way you're going to get people to come into unity. I mean, if you're saying the same prayer... That's going to help them come together. Well, maybe your family ought to come into unity about your money. Maybe you and your husband ought to come into unity about what you're praying for. I mean, you won't even pray if he's listening. And he won't pray if you're listening. So why don't you all get a prayer that you all can pray and you're saying the same thing. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, I'm just up here in the Holy Ghost and everybody is, uh, is down there. Hallelujah. What I want to do today is I want to pray the Word of God. And a prayer is more caught than taught. I've been to prayer conferences, and I'd speak, and we'd 
preach on prayer, and then that'd be it. They go home. And if you'll pray, you'll learn how to pray. But there's a right way to pray, and in tonight, there's things that God can do for you that could never happen if you just had your moment of silent meditation or your devotions at home. And I believe God wants to do great miracles here tonight. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. We had a church, uh, one of our churches. It had a couple in that church that was going to get a divorce. And so they called an all-night prayer meeting. And the church, there was only about 40 in it there, but they interceded for that couple, and God healed their marriage. God healed their life. That's what can happen in a, in a service tonight just like this. Can I hear an amen? amen? I want us all to stand. I want you to place your hand right over your heart, and I want you to pray this prayer with me out loud. Say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Take out of me anything that shouldn't be in me, anything that would hinder my prayers. Take it out of my life. Now, let your faith rise within me. Anoint me tonight. I declare your promises are true in the name of Jesus. Now, what enables us to come before the throne of God to get our prayers answered is we have the righteousness of God in Christ. Not because of our righteousness. The Bible says it's as filthy rags. It's filthy. It's dirty. It's nasty. But we have the righteousness of Christ. Whether you feel like you have the righteousness of God doesn't matter. It's not based on how you feel. It's based on a position that God has declared for us. And tonight I want you to put on the cloak of righteousness. I want you to put on the garment of righteousness before we come boldly to declare what God has for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said you restoreth my soul and you lead me in the paths of righteousness. I declare tonight you're restoring our souls and you're leading us in the, in the, the road of righteousness. Father, you said according to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth and thy right hand is full of righteousness. You said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Father, you said, He that knew no sin became sin for me, that I might have the righteousness of God in Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lord, you said, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. I declare today, Lord, we have the mantle of righteousness. We have the gift of righteousness. Father, we have the same righteousness that Jesus had. Lord, we don't have any less righteousness. We, we have as much right to come before God as Jesus did, as Paul did, as Mary the mother of Christ did, as, as John the beloved did. Father, we have authority. And we have a position in Christ Jesus. And Lord, that door handle that opens the door is Jesus. Hallelujah. So in the name of Jesus, we come boldly before the throne of grace that we might obtain favor and find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands up to the Lord right now. <coughs> I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I want you to begin to pray out loud. Hallelujah. This is not a moment of silence. This is a moment you are to raise your voice to be heard in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bibi under the book, Coyata la Boko, Yandra the book, Coyata la Boko. Bori under the book, Coyata la Boko, Yandra the book, Coyata la Boko, Yandra the book, Coyata la Boko. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bobo, bobo, ko, yata, la, boko, yandara, la, boko. Come on, let it begin to rise before the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Tonight, if you have members of your family away from God or your family's under a real, uh, a, a real struggle, there's a war, there's a, an attack on your home, I want you to come down here to the front. Margaret, I want you to come. Lead us in this song as she comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now tonight we're going to begin to pray for families. And if you're here tonight, I don't care whether you're sitting up here or you're back there. If you've got someone that's a part of your family, they may not be here in Louisville, but you have a family, a family member, raise your hand. Because we're praying for all of them tonight. And you know, I just see, I, I just sort of see this in the spirit tonight. I just see that some people have stood back like you were cloaked in the darkness of the trees and the night. And things have been going on in your family and you've just wandered around in that dark place. But I say to you tonight, the Lord says that you're to move up to the gate, to move forward and to begin to pray and to intercede for lives and families. For this is an hour where the enemy would come to destroy to tear down, to uproot the very plan of God, to take your faith to a level and drag you down. But I would say to you tonight that this is a time and a season where God is bringing an anointing. The Holy Spirit is anointing us to pray and to believe God for our families. Now maybe you're here tonight and you have a marriage that's, dis that's become disturbed. You don't have peace in your home. You don't have agreement as Pastor Bob was talking about. Well, I say to you tonight that let's pray and let's agree. For the Word of God declares, and you pray tonight as I pray. I'm going to pray and you pray and intercede as well. Let's begin to pray and lift our families before the Lord. Now, Lord, tonight, call their names out before God tonight. Lord, we call every family member out to you. Lord, for your Word declares that as for me... This is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, that my spirit is upon thee, and my words what I, which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Lord, tonight we declare that the word of God is searching out our family members, that you're beginning to work in their lives. I pray for my own family. I plead a blood covering of Jesus Christ over my family, over Bob, over Rachel, over Justin, over Jessica, over Jacob, and over Landon. I declare that my family shall serve the Lord. I thank you, Father, that as we join hand in hand, Lord, we declare that every wicked thing that would come against our families is being broken in Jesus' name, and that the seed of the righteous is being delivered tonight in the name of Jesus. I declare that my seed, my, our children, are being delivered into the hands of God, into the plan of God. We declare, Father, that homes are being restored, that marriages are being healed tonight in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for that one who is who's wavered away from you in the home. I thank you that you're bringing them back. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to mend the, the, the threads that have been frayed and broken. Faith that has been misused God abused in Jesus name for this is your promise God and we declare the peace of God 
for all of my children shall be taught of the Lord and great is the peace of my children I claim it tonight in Jesus name you claim it tonight in Jesus name thank you Lord for peace thank you for peace in our family thank you for peace in our homes thank you Lord that there's peace where we go thank you Lord that you've given us Lord that with every step we take that our feet are being ordered by you and that we're bringing peace into every situation Lord we pray for those children Lord those family members who might have who have learning disorders who are struggling in school who are having a difficulty who are not making the grade who are not comprehending if you're there tonight raise your hand you may have children or grandchildren because this is a promise that God gives us in Daniel 1 4 children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such has ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of Chaldeans. Lord, I thank you tonight that our children are being equipped, God, mentally to receive and to understand and to comprehend. I thank you, God, that our children are going to excel and they're not going to lag. They're going to move forward in Jesus' name. They're going to have an interest in the right place, God. They're not just going to be following every wind and way of the world. But, Lord, you are giving them wisdom and that they're going to walk and have knowledge and understanding in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for our families. Thank you, Lord, that our families are going to serve you. And tonight we declare the 91st Psalm over our families in Jesus' name. That we're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That we're going to remain in that place. Tonight we take refuge in you. And our families take refuge in you, Lord. That you're our fortress. That you're our God in whom we trust that you're the one who will rescue us them from the hunter's traps and from deadly plague and Lord we thank you that you cover us Lord with your feathers and under your wings we have refuge so raise your hands tonight to the Lord and declare that father you are our strength you are our covering you are our restorer you are the one God who can break every evil thing over families and bring peace and victory in Jesus' night, and we, to, and we receive it tonight. Give the Lord a hand, a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and all of the honor. You are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise and all of the glory, God. We give you praise and all of the honor. Amen. You, you are, are our God, God the, the one we live for. We give you praise and all of the, the glory, God. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to be praying right at this very moment. If you need a healing in your body, if you're here and you need any type of healing in your body, and it's not just a physical healing. But if you need an emotional healing as well, I'm believing that God is going to touch you right now by His power and He's going to restore your health. And every symptom is going to leave your body and the authority of Jesus' name. I want you to come very quickly right up front if you need some type of healing in your body. If you need God to heal you in any area, any aspect, the healing power is here right now to be released to you. And I'm going to ask our pastors to begin to come. Begin to come around these that have come around the altar. Just if you've come and you need a healing in your body, either physically or emotionally, raise your hands up to the Lord so they know who you are. All right, there's a number of people right here. And our pastors are going to begin to lay their hands on you in just a moment. And I want you just to be in an atmosphere of just worship and reception right now as we declare the word of the Lord today. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will put none of all the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon them that hate thee. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 
Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall bring forth speedily, and thy righteous shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. And ye will serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and will take away sickness from the midst of thee. For I will restore health unto thee, and heal thee of all thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they have called upon me. Right now, pastor, just begin to lay your hands. Right now, the healing power of Jesus Christ is being released into your body in a powerful and mighty way. Right now, the anointing is destroying every yoke of sickness and weakness and deformities. It is being annihilated and terminated from your body right now. Right now, many of you are feeling a heat just kind of pulsate through your body. Right now, God is correcting conditions that have lingered and lasted for months and some even years. But right now, God is reversing those conditions. God is restoring health back to you. Energy, stamina, endurance is coming back to you in Jesus' mighty name. God is supernaturally healing arthritic pain. God is loosening up those joints in Jesus' mighty name. Inflammation is leaving bodies right now in Jesus' mighty name. God's healing someone of gastritis in Jesus' mighty name. Blood sugar levels are being regulated right now in Jesus' mighty name. God is healing right now. Floaters that have been in the eye, God's healing that condition. Cataracts in Jesus' mighty name. God's healing that. Come on, receive that. Accept that right now. God is healing a back right now. Right now, there's been tightness and stiffness. It's been hard for you to move around. But right now, God's loosening that up in Jesus' mighty name for the glory of God. Asthmatic conditions. God's are healing respiratory conditions. Allergies. God's touching you right now. Your lungs are supernaturally and bronchial tubes opening up now for the glory of God. Reach out right now. God's healing right now. Someone has injured your left foot. God's healing that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Someone has a sprained right knee. God's healing that now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Osteoporosis. God's healing that now in Jesus' name. Brittle bone disease. God's healing that now. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Lord, I speak that over every single person here today. Be healed. Be whole. Be well. In Jesus' mighty name. For the glory of God. Hallelujah. I want everyone to lay your hands upon yourself right now. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. I declare right now. There's an anointing upon me to walk in divine, supernatural health all the days of my life. I will not be sickly, weak, or feeble, but strong and healthy, full of energy, stamina, endurance, in Jesus' mighty name. As my days are, so shall my strength be. With long life, you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, I receive this anointing to walk in divine health all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Now give the Lord a big praise clap and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. You can stay right up here if you want. How many of you want to get out of debt? You need to get out of debt. Raise your hand real high. Hallelujah. How many of you believe God can do it? Amen. Now listen, how many of you know we got to do our part too? Come on, amen. We got to do our part. How many of you are willing to do your part? But no, we also need breakthroughs, don't we?
Let's pray that right now. Father, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy 28, 2, it says, And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if you will listen to the voice of of the Lord your God. Lord, I pray that over my life today. Lord, I pray Job 36, 11. If you obey and serve him, they, you shall spend your, your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray Psalms 34, 10. It says the young lions do lack her, but those that, that seek the Lord shall not be in lack of any good thing. Hallelujah. How many of you receive that? I will not lack any good thing in my life. I've got all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on, say that. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Lord, we pray Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Lay your hand on your heart right now. Father, you've given us a lot of desires. And Lord, we need God to be blessed. We need the prosperity of God in our lives. Lord, to see those dreams fulfilled. And God, I thank you that you're going to give me the desires of my heart right now. Come on, take, tell the Lord right now. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give me the desires of my heart. Lord, those things that I've dreamed about, that I haven't seen to come to pass, God. Lord, they're going to happen. I believe it. I speak it, God, by faith. I believe it in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that you're making a way. Hallelujah, that my dreams shall come true in Jesus' name. Psalms 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that there's nothing, God, that you're going to withhold from me, God. Lord, my heart, God, is, is pure. Lord, my motivations are pure before you. And God, I thank you, God, that you're going to bless my life in many ways. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray Psalms 113.3. Hallelujah. Jesus, your word says that wealth and riches shall be in my house. Come on, say that out loud. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. Lord, I thank you for the wealth of wisdom. Lord, I thank you for the wealth of peace in my house. Lord, I thank you for the wealth of wealth in my house. Lord, I thank you for the material things, God that I need. I thank you, God, for the wealth, oh God, that you've given me, Lord, in my house, God. And I thank you that it shall increase in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that I'm a tither, that I don't rob from you, and that I give to the house of God, and I give to missions, and I give to the work of God, and I'm not stingy, but I got a good attitude, Lord, in all that I do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now I want you to join the hand of the person next to you. I want you to pray the wealth and blessing of God upon their life. Pray, pray, pray for them like you want them to pray for you. Father, I pray for that one on my right. I pray for that one on my left. God, I pray you'll bless them. Come on, just say it out loud. I bless them in the name of Jesus. May all your bills be paid. Maybe you get out of debt. Hallelujah. May you give thousands of dollars to missions and to the work of God. May you be blessed of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I pray favor upon your life. I pray new ideas. I pray health for your body. I pray and I speak over your life today that you shall be blessed of God, that you shall have the favor of God, that God shall increase every area of your life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now lift the hand of the Lord. Just thank Him right now. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you for the blessing and prosperity of God in my life. I'm going to speak it. I'm going to have a good attitude. I'm going to believe for it in Jesus' name. How many of you would like to give more to the work of God? I said, how many of you would like to give more to the work of God? Well, if you will be faithful, God will do it. Amen. Lord, I thank you, God, that I'm going to give more to the work of God this year than I ever have before. I thank you for thousands of dollars coming through my hands. I'll be ch channeled into the work of God in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you praise hallelujah. and all of the honor. You are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise and all of the glory, God. Yes, we do. We give you praise and all of the honor. You are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise and all of the glory, God. Hallelujah. We want to begin to pray God's will for our life. And as we look in Matthew 
It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we know that there's no sickness in heaven, there's no poverty in heaven. And so we want to pray God's will to be done in our lives. Hallelujah. And Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and we delight in his way. So we know that God wants to bless us, and God wants to prosper us. And just a couple of days ago, as I was in my prayer closet, just my personal prayer, just interceding, and he said, as you seek me, I will prosper you. So I speak that word tonight. As we are seeking God, God promised that he will prosper us. Hallelujah. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. He called on a massee at Adamaha. See, call on a massee, call on a Mahanidi, a sick or a bosso. Licon on a massee at Adamahani or so near the massee at Adamahaya or a bossaya. He can on a massee, call on a massee at Adamahaya. Yanio so yet on a maha. Yanodia see at another massee or a Mahanidi, a sea or a Mahaya. Holy Ghost, we give you praise. Holy Ghost, we give you honor. Holy Ghost, we give you glory, oh God. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. God, in Deuteronomy 28, you said if we would hearken diligently to obey every commandment that you command this day. God, you said we're blessed going in and we're blessed coming out. So God, we declare the blessings of God, the perfect will of God to be done in our lives in the name of Jesus. God, we give you the honor, oh God, that you're ordering our steps, oh God. We receive instructions from you, Father. And Lord, as you give us instructions, we will obey the word of God. We will take heed to the word of God. We will listen to the word of God in the name of Jesus. You said as we ask, as we knock, the door shall be open. And tonight we're asking, we're knocking, oh God. So the door shall be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we give you praise, God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for Ephesians 5, 17. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. God, we thank you for 2 Chronicles 26, 5. And as long as you sought the Lord, God prospered you. Hallelujah. Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he delivered me from all of my fears. Psalm 91, 16. With long life will I satisfy you. You will be satisfied with long life. And I will show you my salvation. Hallelujah. Psalm 92, 14. Then they shall bring forth fruit in old age. And they shall be fat and flourishing. So God, we give you praise that as long as we seek you, we will prosper in every area of our lives. We will prosper. And we give you the praise already for prosperity. We thank you for the favor. We thank you for the increase. We thank you for divine appointments in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you're doing this hour in our lives. Holy Ghost, you are in charge. Holy Ghost, we hide behind the cross that you will have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to pray for our hearts. Who wants a heart like Jesus? Who wants a heart like God? Who wants God's heart? Well, guess what? The heart of God is lavish. He is very generous. He gives and keeps giving. And tonight we're going to pray that God molds our heart into the heart of God, that we become givers, lavish givers, that we just give out of the abundance that God is blessing us with because we are blessed to be a blessing. And tonight we want to be a blessing. We want to be a blessing to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to be a blessing everywhere we go. We want to smell like heaven. So let's pray for our hearts to be molded into the heart of God. Father God, we come to you through the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that you give us your heart tonight, God. That you give us a heart that's lavish, God. That you give us a heart that help us to give, God. God, we pray that our giving doubles in the next six months. God, that we give and give and give, Lord. That we don't look at lack, Father. But we look to you, the God who owns the cattle on the hills, Father. Lord, I come against us spirit of fear father father our eyes are on you who is a great giver father lord mold our hearts father to be givers like you father you said if we ask we will receive lord i thank you we're seeking you tonight that as you bless us father that we are givers father into your kingdom into this good fertile ground father lord we sow seed into this ground in the name of jesus the lord father i thank you that the more we increase and the more our children increase that we are blessed of the Lord Father that even the heavens are the Lord's and the earth he has given to the children of men Father we thank you that you have given the earth to us God that you've given it to us to conquer Father thank you that we walk in all authority and doors are open to us and blessings are open to us and we are a blessing but Father I pray our giving increase in the next six months that we give double father that we give double father that we pour out a blessing father before your throne into this good ground in the name of Jesus hallelujah How can we know that the end times are truly here? And how long will it be before the return of Christ? Dr. Bob Rogers answers these questions and more in his CD teachings, Signs of the End Times. Discover the true pattern in the Bible of how we know the times we live in. This teaching will encourage you to spread your faith with others and to win the lost in the last great battle for souls. Signs of the End Times is available now from Bob Rogers Ministries by calling 1-888-613-6080 or visit bobrogersministries.org and request your copy today.